everybody, this is Lisa Langell and I am going to explain to you one way to take Photoshop and make a diptych or triptych out of an image. So there's multiple ways you can do this. This is one way that you'll be sure that you get the right size, the right resolution, and that you don't miss pieces of your image when separating them out into two or three works from one work. So here is an example of an abstract image that I shot of some sandhill cranes. I'm going to use this and create this into a diptych. So the first thing that I want to do is go to my source file and I'm going to make a duplicate copy. And I can do that by dragging this down here and dropping it over the duplicate layer. Or I could right click and then choose duplicate layer. Either one works just fine. The next thing that I want to do is I want to look at the size of the image. So if I go to image, image size, I can see it in either pixels or inches. I'm going to change it to inches for a minute. And I can see that the width is 18.24 and the height is 12.16. If I did it in pixels, just so you can see the difference, it's 5472 by 3648 by 300. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my inches for a minute. And I'm going to leave the resolution at 300. And I can see that this is 18 by 12. Okay, so now that I've done that, what I want to do is decide how big this is going to be and what I'm going to print it as, as far as the final print size for the wall. So the first thing that I want to do is going back to that image size. Let's say here, if I go to image size and we're looking at inches, it's 18 inches wide and 12 inches tall or so. Um, is that the size that you want your, your image or do you want to make it larger? So there's some pros and cons to um, making the image bigger than you originally shot it. This was full frame. I did not crop this image. But I am going to say, let's say I want to have this whole thing be 36 inches wide and 24 inches tall. So if I do that and I leave it at resample, I can click OK. And now this image will have a much larger size. Okay, so I have enlarged this image from a file size perspective, but I'll scroll out so you can see or zoom out here so that you can see the image again. And if I went to image at the top, image size, you're going to see it's now 36 inches wide by 24 inches tall and a resolution of 300 pixels per inch. Okay, so I want to break this up so that I can put it on my wall. So this is 36 inches now. I'm going to need a wall that has some room on either side. So I can't just put this in a 36 inch space or it would butt up right against each edge of the wall. So I need a wall that might be, you know, 46 inches wide or 50 or something like that. And then you have to account for this space when we cut this image into two and hang it as two pieces on the wall. So, you know, you might have two or three inches, for example, or possibly more between images. So you need to think of that through when you're hanging this. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to decide what my size is going to be. And I'm actually going to cut these asymmetrical. So it's 36 inches across. And I'm going to do a one third, two thirds split. 36 divided by 3 would be 12 inches. So what I need to do is go to File, New. And then when I create a new file, I'm going to make it so that it is 12 inches across. Change that to inches. So 12 inches across. And remember, we were 24 inches tall, so my height is going to be 24. My resolution needs to be the same as my uh, resolution in the original image. So that's going to be 300. So I'm going to create this blank uh, file, if you will, um, at 12 inches across and 24 inches high by 300 resolution, and it gives me this. So now, if I copy this and I go to Edit, Copy, right? So I've got this as a copied file. I go over here, and I can go to Edit, Paste, or Control V. This now puts that size right on my image. I now can go to Edit transform and you can pick any of these I'll pick scale if I go to transform I can slide this over to the left or slide it over to the right depending on how you want to break up your image I'll slide this one over to the left 
and then I'm going to hit enter to set that. So right now it's like having a cookie cutter. So I am using this as a template and I can even go up here to the right and change the opacity down a little bit and you'll see the image behind it. So that's going to be the piece that we're going to use for one of these. So here's the next step. So now if I go to my crop tool, and there's a couple ways you could do this, but I'm going to choose crop and I'm going to choose this and crop it. So I only have the 12 inch piece. Then I'm going to go and file save as and save this in my file settings as the 12 inch piece, 12 inches, whoops, 12 by 24. All right, and I'm going to save that as the PSD file, and then we can also save it as a TIFF or JPEG. So I'll save that right now as the PSD or Photoshop file. What I can do next to create the JPEG is I'm going to go over to this white layer that was our template that we cut out, and I'm going to turn it off by clicking on the eyeball. Now I can go to File, Save As, and I can change this to a JPEG or TIFF, depending on what you want to upload to your printer, or maybe you'll print it yourself. So I'll click OK. All right, now that image is saved as a JPEG. So the next thing that we need to do is pretty simple. I can go and undo this if I like, right? I just went to undo, and um, you can do that a couple ways, but I can go to edit and then undo state change or step forward or backwards. Um, or you can hit control alt Z or command alt Z and that also works. Um, but anyhow, now I'm back to this original image. The rest is really easy. So if I go to my crop tool and now I crop for the other half, now I can save this as, and I'll go to save as, and I can call this uh, Sandhill Crane Abstract 24 by 24 because you know we had the 12 inch piece on the other one now this is the 24 inch and 12 and 24 is 36 inches wide and I can save that piece and that's the PSD file that's the Photoshop files you can always go back to the original um, you know that's a lossless file as well but I can go to save as and then save this as an actual TIFF or JPEG so I'll save mine as a JPEG and now what you have are the two pieces. So I could then take this and and I could even, you know, if you just want to see what it would look like on a wall, we can change the colors and so forth on this quite a bit. I could take the hue and saturation down uh, and, and tone that down a little bit and even play with the hue or saturation if I really wanted to and you know change the lightness or whatever this is just a fake wall right so we're just going to play with this but now i can go to this one and i can copy that image i want to copy the background copy not the layer so i will copy that paste that here and now it's going to be quite big because my uh, sample wall file is a lot smaller so i'm just going to bring that down and you can get it down to a size that you like and I'm just holding my shift key and using and dragging these corners down. All right, so there's one. And again, I don't need that template with that cookie cutter on there anymore. I'm going to hit uh, Control A and Control C, or I can go to Edit and um, Copy. And then I can go back to my wall and paste this here. And again, this is a pretty big file, so I'm stretching it down. If you want to uh, see what I'm doing, I'll zoom out. This is the original piece right here. And I am just hitting my Shift key and making this smaller and then dragging it up so it fits here. And then I'll zoom in and we'll finish it off. All right, so now that I'm ready to do this and I'll finalize this here. I'll stretch it out a little bit more. Now we should have the diptych. So you can move these around by hitting Control or Command T to select them and then put them as you wish. And this is just so that you can get a sample of what it's you know, going to look like. Obviously, if you're printing for real, you would want to go, you know, and order those and print those. And uh, what I like to do on my wall is put 
uh, a template on the wall using newspaper to make sure that it's actually going to fit well. Uh, so if you want to display this as if you were viewing it as a uh, final piece, uh, maybe you want to put it up on your website for sale on a wall. You know, it's a fake wall, but you can display it. And then I can, uh, excuse me, go to layer and then layer style, bevel and emboss. And I am selecting one of these two layers here with the images. And then for bevel and emboss, you can play around with the depth, the size, and how soft you want that bevel. So watch how I drag this over, how it changes. Um, and I can drag the softening and it can change that as well. And you can also change the angle that you want that bevel. So move it around here. I'm going to say at about 30%. And then we'll do the same thing with the other one. I'll go to layer, layer style, bevel and emboss, and it'll remember my last setting. And so now they're both beveled the way I wanted them. So I'll click OK. All right, now I want to go to layer, layer style, and then we need to go down to drop shadow. And I can click drop shadow and leave it at about 30%. You can look at my settings here. You can change the spread and so forth by dragging these in or out or the distance. Um, you don't want them too far, otherwise it looks unrealistic. But you can play with that a little bit. And then I'll go back to this other layer here and go to Layer, Layer Style, and then go all the way down to Drop Shadow. And then it will remember those settings. You can click OK. Now you'll get to see what that image looks like on the wall. And if you don't like the coloring, you can play with that as well. You know, I can go in and put all kinds of different colors and things in here. But it gives you an idea of how to visualize what that's going to look like as a diptych. And now you know exactly how to size them so that when you order it from your printer, it's exactly the right size for your needs. I hope this was helpful. I hope you have a wonderful time doing this yourself and getting a little more creative with your photography. Thanks so much and have a great day.